Many scholars have noted that the river Euphrates has recently been drying up, and this is shockingly foretold in the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, as the sixth plague poured out by the sixth angel. We read in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 12, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and dried up the water thereof, that a way might be prepared for the kings from the rising of the sun, end quote. What is the meaning of the scary episode from the apocalypse, and what does the river Euphrates symbolize in the Bible? My name is Dr. Taylor Marshall, and today I'm going to guide you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to the apocalypse on the topic of the Euphrates River, which is mentioned 27 times in sacred scripture. At the end of today's video, I will examine the two passages from the book of Revelation about the drying up of the river Euphrates in the context of the seven plagues of the book of Revelation. So let's get started and make sure you stay to the end because I'm going to go through the seven plagues of the book of Revelation and particularly focus on plague six on the river Euphrates. The river Euphrates makes its first appearance in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, in the first few pages of sacred scripture. We read in Genesis chapter 2, verses 10 through 14, this initial reference about the Euphrates River. Now a river went out from the place of pleasure to water paradise, which is from thence divided into four heads. The name of one is Pishon, that is, which surrounds all the land of Hevelah, where gold is good, and the gold of that land is very good. There is found Bedellium in the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gehon, the same is that which surrounds all the land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Tigris. The same passeth along the Assyrians. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Now, in this early context, the Euphrates River is associated with the Garden of Eden, a symbol of paradise and God's creation. The word Euphrates is related to an ancient Persian word, for good to cross over, but scholars today still debate if that is the best meaning and the best translation. Of course, good to cross over is going to refer to the book of Revelation, as we shall see. Now, as we move through the Old Testament, the Euphrates River holds a historical and geographical significance. It served as a natural border and played a role in the narratives of various biblical figures, such as Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, and the prophets of Old Testament Israel. The Euphrates River takes on a prophetic significance in several Old Testament passages, and let's take a look at those. First off, Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 7. In this verse, God promises the people of Israel the entire land from the desert and the Lebanus, that's Lebanon, unto the great river Euphrates. So God is promising the people of Israel, not just what we think of as Israel today, but all the way up to the border of the Euphrates River. That will be very important as we move into the book of Revelation. We move also to 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 21. King Solomon's reign is described as extending from the Euphrates River all the way down to the land of the Philistines. So here we see that King Solomon, through God's promise, was able to establish the geographic realm from the Euphrates all the way south, as God had promised to Moses in a covenant. So Solomon is fulfilling the covenant and the promise of God to Moses by giving him this geographic real estate, bumping up all the way to the river Euphrates. We also see in Jeremiah chapter 46, verse 2, the prophet Jeremiah mentions the Euphrates River in a prophecy against Egypt. And here is where the Euphrates River begins to be associated with impending doom and judgment and battle and war and armies. If we move to the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 27, verse 12, there's a reference to the great river, and this is likely the Euphrates. It's a symbol of God gathering the exiled Jews who have been kicked out of the country because of their fornication and their idolatry and their infidelity of God, 
and they'll be brought back over the Euphrates as a fulfillment of God's covenant. Also in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 7 through 8, the Euphrates River is mentioned in the context of Assyria's invasion and as a symbol of the enemy reaching into God's promised land. So as you can see, the Euphrates River takes on a renewed prophetic importance throughout the Bible, but it culminates at the last book of the Bible. It culminates in the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, chapters 9 and 16. So in Revelation chapter 9, verse 13 through 16, we read these words, And the six angels sounded the trumpet, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the great altar, which is before the eyes of God, saying to the six angel who had the trumpet, Loose the four angels who are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, who were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to kill the third part of men. And the number of the army of horsemen was 20,000 times 10,000, and I heard the number of them. Here we see there are four angels that are bound seemingly in the Euphrates River. Who are these four angels? Well, they hearken back in Revelation, perhaps to the four horsemen, but they are to go out throughout the world at the six trumpets and kill. They are messengers of death. They go out unbound from the Euphrates River, and they kill one-third of humans. Now, there's another reference to the Euphrates River. We just saw the sixth trumpet blown, and now we move to the sixth plague. If you read the book of Revelation, you need to realize there's four sets of seven. There's the seven churches, there's the seven seals, there's the seven trumpets, and then there are the seven plagues. And both in the seven trumpets and in the seven plagues, the Euphrates River is mentioned with the sixth angel in both accounts. Now, when we move to the plagues, we look at Revelation chapter 16, verse 12, we read, and quote, the six angels poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and dried up the water thereof, that a way might be prepared for the kings from the rising sun. Now, people have associated with China. It may be that the sixth trumpet is another way of talking about the sixth plague. Clearly, death, doom, and judgment is coming upon the earth, and the crossing of that river Euphrates and the drying up the, of the river Euphrates is an apocalyptic signal of the end times. Now, I'd like to explain to you the seven plagues of the apocalypse. This video is brought to you by the New St. Thomas Institute. My name is Dr. Taylor Marshall, and I teach online courses at the New St. Thomas Institute on Old Testament, New Testament, church history, apologetics, theology, and so on and so forth. And we are releasing a new certificate curriculum called Apocalyptic Studies. It will take you through the apocalyptic literature of the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Book of Revelation, private revelation, all kinds of things. So check it out at New St. Thomas Institute or nsti.com. Sign up at nsti.com. And if you want to learn more about this in depth, I would really encourage you to check out my number one best selling book, Antichrist and Apocalypse. I have charts, I have detailed citations about all the seven churches, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven plagues, the mark of the beast, 666, Armageddon, the millennium. It's all there in a very scholarly presentation. So if you want a sober reading of the apocalypse in the book of Revelation, check out my book, Antichrist and Apocalypse, available at amazon.com. So to better understand the role of the Euphrates in the sixth plague, I want to go through the seven plagues of the book of Revelation. So the very first plague or the first bowl or vial poured out by the angel is the pouring out of his bowl that results in painful and grievous sores breaking out on those who have the mark of the beast and worship his images. This 
harkens back to the book of Exodus, where there was also a plague of sores. The second plague in the seven plagues is the sea is turned into blood, and every living creature in the sea dies as a result. Again, reminding you of the book of Exodus. The third plague is that the rivers and the springs of water turn into blood. The fourth plague is that the sun is given power to scorch people with intense heat, causing great suffering. The fifth plague is the plague of darkness. Now, this relates to the three days of darkness. If you're a Christian, if you're a believer, and you don't know about the three days of darkness, I really encourage you to check out my video on the three days of darkness. In the book of Exodus, three days of darkness visited over Egypt, and at the end of the world, there will also be this fifth plague of darkness. It will be a three days of darkness. It will be scary. It will be horrible. You need to learn about it. Check out my video on the three days of darkness with the fifth plague. Darkness will fall over the kingdom of the beast, and the people in this darkness are going to experience extreme pain and agony. And then that gives us the next plague, the sixth plague, the plague of the Euphrates River. This is where the Euphrates River, as we have said, begins to dry up, and it prepares a way for the kings of the east who are gathered for battle. Who are the kings of the east? Well, anyone east of Israel qualifies for that label. Russians, Scythians, Indians, Chinese, various Asian groups, who knows? But they will be coming towards Israel in the final Armageddon, and there will be a drying up of the Euphrates. And as I've mentioned, the Euphrates River has been drying up lately, which has everybody on alert. I'll get to that towards the end, because I don't actually think we're at the end, and I'll explain the reason why. The seventh plague, which is the final plague before everything is brought to a head in the book of Revelation, is the plague of earthquakes and hail. The great earthquake occurs, which shakes the entire earth, and that's accompanied by unprecedented amount of hailstones of immense size falling down upon the earth. Also, hearkening back to the exodus and the plagues that fell upon Egypt. So going back to the Euphrates River, it's often interpreted symbolically in many prophetic passages. We've seen that in the Old Testament. It represents the boundary the northern boundary separating God's holy land and his people from the pagan nations. And so the drying up of the Euphrates signifies the removal of that protection, the removal of that water barrier, so that the kings of the east, whoever they are, can converge for a final confrontation. And we call that final confrontation Armageddon, which I'll explain if you go to nsti.com or get my book, you learn about that. So according to God's promise to Moses, David, and Solomon, the Euphrates is that upper northern border belonging to the Holy Land. And it becomes a symbol of the Antichrist's power to bring armies, invaders, Gentiles, warriors into the heart of Jerusalem. Furthermore, the Euphrates River can symbolize geopolitical powers and regions. In biblical times, it was the, the symbol. I mean, it's hard. In America, we have a lot of false boundary lines, right? They're just drawn on maps. But in antiquity, the boundary markers weren't just drawn on maps. They were mountain regions, oceans, and rivers. And so for the biblical mind, for the ancient Near East, the Euphrates was that, not just imaginary line, but a real river blocking the way into the Holy of Holies. Now, we've discussed the seven plagues and the seven angels. And if you want a more detailed account of the seven archangels and their role in the book of Revelation, please check out my next video. It's called The Seven Archangels at the End of the World, who they are and what they do. Click on it and start watching. You'll be blessed and you'll learn a ton. The Seven Archangels.